Good morning guys, Cody here with Edge Pro. I was talking to a customer on the phone a couple days ago and he wanted to know would the scissor attachment sharpen his bird shoes. Today we're gonna sharpen something kind of out of the ordinary. They look kind of they look kind of surgical, but they look pretty high quality. So I'm really looking forward to see what kind of results we're gonna be able to get. All right, so let's take a little closer look at the scissors. I mean, no problem. So you really wouldn't be able to know that these are dull just from cutting paper. But I do have a heavier piece of fabric here, and these do not want to cut this at all. So the real test will be, after we're finished sharpening, we're going to come back and try to cut this same piece of fabric again, and hopefully we're going to get a little bit better results. So I am going to need to take these apart. To do that, I'm just going to open them up all the way. That's going to pop this spring loose, and then it just separates just like that. It looks like this spring is going to stay attached to the scissor. If this were loose, then what I would do take this spring out and I'd put it in a box close by because anytime you take stuff apart and they have these springs or sometimes you'll find little ball bearings it's really easy to lose track of all the little parts of scissors and they're generally kind of unique parts that are difficult to find replacements for just as a safety precaution I usually put little parts that come off of scissors in a box Okay, so this is about what the basic setup would look like. The, these scissors are pretty significantly dull. You can see all that light that's getting reflected on the inside there. Ben, I'm gonna use the assistance of a felt tip marker to help me find my angle setting. The whole scissor attachment will swing back and forth, and that's all angle adjustment there. So I'd like to start behind the edge. It looks like there's gonna be a fair amount of metal removal required. Still got a ways to go. I can tell I'm going to need to remove a lot of metal from this thing because, man, these things were really dull. Even though it looks like it's removing metal all the way out to the edge, the inside corner of this thing is rounded over pretty badly. So I'm actually gonna switch from the 400 grit stone down to the 220 to try and cut down on time. I can feel a burst starting to form. These ones are just gonna take a little bit of time. Even though I'm feeling the burr, I'm gonna take this scissor out and I still wanna inspect that inside edge because I have actually experienced when I'll feel a burr, but there can still sometimes be a little ways to go when, when it comes to sharpening scissors. So the burr is not always the final word on whether or not you're ready to start progressing through the finer grits. I can feel somewhat of a burr, but I'm still catching a lot of light reflection, meaning that there's still a dull spot here. I'm 
wipe these off very carefully. I'm feeling a lot more confident about progressing through the finer grits now that I'm not catching any reflection down the inside of the blade along the edge. Now we're gonna move back to the 400. So I'm gonna end up deburring this in two or three different stages. I'm just gonna try and do what I can to kind of clean up my thousand grit stone. The burr on the inside right now is aggressive enough to where I don't really wanna to touch that burr with a tape. So I'm going to repeat that deburring process with the 2000 tape and I like to wipe the scissor off before I deburr. Alright one last step with the 3000 tape we should have this half of the scissor done. All right, so the first side is done and it turned out really good considering where this thing was before. Pretty happy with it. The second side actually has a bit of an inside curve to it. I'm gonna use the half inch stones. We got some little serrations, but then after those serrations, there's actually a flat edge. So even though I had the angle properly set for the other side of the scissor, I always double check it on the other side because a lot of the time I'll find that the other side of the scissor will be sharpened at a slightly different angle. I'll lock that in. So I'm going to double check it. All right, you guys see that? That little spot right there? That is the only dull spot left. And so I'm really glad that I caught that because if I hadn't caught that, I would have progressed through the finer stones and then when I went to do my cutting test, I would have found that little dull spot and I would have had to have gone back over it. So I'm just gonna load it right back in and I'm gonna focus some more attention on this little spot. It appears that I got it. I'm not seeing that spot anymore. I'm just gonna draw the blade towards me to deburr, holding the inside edge up flat against the stone. All right, moving on to the 2000 grit polish tape. When you're using the scissor attachment, everything is backwards. So I normally begin on knives using just a pull stroke, 
but because the edge is facing in the other direction, I actually begin using just push strokes to help keep from tearing the tape. After I've gone over each section of the blade a couple times, then I'll just start gently going back and forth. All right, so the next step is just to get going to be to put these things back together. Um, I'm going to just separate the blades, kind of push them apart as I close them the first time. Which is kind of hard to do because these are some pretty thick pieces of steel. And honestly, the first couple times I closed those, those really wanted to rub together. But it's starting to loosen up. The inside edge still looks really clean. I've never had a pair of scissors want to rub that hard, though, after I sharpened them. I mean, they close fine now. But that initial closing is a little bit rougher than I wanted. So... Let's do the cut test. Well, we know that it's going to cut paper fine, right? No problem there. Now, honestly, I'm a little bit nervous about this. I have a lot riding on this. So, we'll cut the Cordura. Oh, look at that. No problem. There's a spot where they kind of want to jump a little, and I think that it's because the spring here is rusty. That's definitely better. All right, guys, so we're all finished sharpening these poultry shears, but the sharpening process itself, I felt, went really smooth. The only bumpy part was when I put them back together and actually attempted to close them for the first time. I normally will um, separate the blades as I close them, but these things are just so thick and so stout that um, as hard as I'd push, they just would not separate. And so those edges were kind of wanting to bite into each other a little. I don't know. It just made me a little bit nervous. Um, I wasn't real wild about that part of it. In the end, they're still cutting a lot better than they were before. So I asked Ben what could I have done differently to avoid those edges biting into each other. And he suggested something that I wish I would have thought of at the time. He said, next time sharpen one side. And then with the other side still dull, put them back together and close them and open them back up a couple of times then load this the other half of the scissor up and sharpen the second half something i'm definitely going to remember i've sharpened a lot of pretty heavy duty stuff but i've never had edges want to bite into each other quite like these ones were but they're still cutting really well so i think that rob is going to be really happy with these i'll get these back in the mail to you and i'll email you a tracking number rob if anybody else has something that they'd like me to sharpen on video then comment below, give me the make and model of your knife, and I'll select one of the knives and you can ship it in to me and I'll make a video about it. And if anybody else has any questions, feel free to reach out to us by email or you can visit our website at edgeproink.com. Thanks for watching.